The Build Show is on the road today. We are in Ranson, West Virginia. We're gonna show you how this stone becomes this insulation on your job site. Today's video is sponsored by Rockwell. Let's get going. All right, guys, I've got with me my builder buddy, Travis Brungard, and I've got my tour guide, Justin. Justin, what happens at this West Virginia facility with these raw materials? Um, so first they're brought in via truck and then they're weighed on our on-site scale and then truck backs into the bay, dumps the raw material in the bay. A loader, oper will come, or loader operator will come in, pick up the raw material, take it to our shaker table where it's dropped onto a conveyor and carried on to on-site storage for silos. Justin, what's the story behind the lined ponds you guys have on your campus? Uh, so we have two retention ponds here that captures everything from the employee parking lot that we walk through, uh, the retention features in the middle, and then our truck parking lot, and it retains it here for natural rainwater collection. And we use this water to supply up to 80% of the water used in our process here at Rand 5. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. So you're not actually pulling from the town's water supply. You're pulling so from these ponds. We do use uh, city water, but we try to keep that to a bare minimum. Like I said, we like to supply at least 80% of the process water here with rainwater collection from the site. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So the raw material comes in from the quarries. They dump it in these bins out here. And this room has a hopper with a conveyor, which is coming right up. And the first step of the process is melting those ingredients. Let's go inside and meet Justin. And Justin, where does that conveyor lead now? So at the top of the silos here, there is a conveyor that's on a spindle essentially, and it reaches the tops of the eight of these silos. So for each raw material that comes in, it goes to a certain silo, and then that'll pivot to the next one and just deposit that raw material there. And then based on the charge recipe, raw material will drop down out of these conveyors here onto a weigh conveyor where it'll pick that charge up, take it onto the shaker table, sieve it out, uh, crush any of the larger pieces of raw material down to the correct size, and then it'll go through a second magnet separator where it'll remove any metal and then go up our uh, skip boys to the top of the furnace. And then the next part of the tour is the furnace where we actually melt. Yep. All so right. So that's where you'll actually see the melting and spinning process. Let's go see that. The silos are in that building we just came from and this lift system is bringing it over here where the melter is. Justin, it looks like we've got a reverse volcano behind me. What are we seeing there? So uh, basically what you see, so we have an online melting process here. So the, in the event that anything goes wrong with that production process, we can't just shut the furnace down. Yep. So what you're seeing here is our ability to go offline. It diverts that melt flow off of our uh, spinners or our cotton candy machines and dumps it in this pit where it'll uh, cool down and be uh, pulled out by front end loaders taken over to storage and later pulverized to be reused as a raw material. So there's almost really no waste in your process. Any yep. cut we, off we try the process gets dropped in there again. Uh, this little cool piece of molten lava will get reused again. Yep. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, so we try to use, reuse everything here from our water to our heat to the raw material itself. There's what we're seeing there is the uh, uh, melting furnace. So you see that stream of melt come out into our gutter troughs and be diverted to our spinners, which are essentially our, our carnival cotton candy machines. <laughs> it, it's simply just like that. Yeah. The fibers are spun with high speed and air pulls them off and to the discernible eye, there's no difference. And does anything happen between water. that and here? So it's being spray, uh, sprayed with its resin and water and then that web is just being conveyed by this large hamster wheel you're seeing. Got so it's it. just continuously moving with the line, pulling those webs off and releasing it into a single layer. It seems so uniform as it comes out here. That's wild. And, and, and that's really a, a, a true show of a good operator up in the, the melting furnace. So they're yeah. controlling how that melt stream is, is hitting those uh, spinners. And that's what produces such a beautiful quality web. And then from here, I saw the machine that kind of spins it, or uh, I don't know what the right term is. So that'd but be your uh, pendulum. So that's the yep, pendulum. Yeah, okay, that's so the pendulum's down here. here. Yep. And then the pendulum and then is taking it to the line 
where you're going to ultimately make the different rock wool insulation products, Yeah, right? so at this point, it, across our product line, it's a very similar product. And, and the magic essentially is being made down here with the pendulum and our LHC, our renewable density device. Where yeah. We're layering it and achieving that specific area weight or density based on the customer. So this raw material here could end up being fluffy insulation that's in a cavity. Yeah. Or, well, it's not fluffy, it's still pretty dense. Yeah. Or it, it could be, be a like really a dense, AFB. high PSI yep. comfort board. Yep. But it all starts right here with the same raw material. Yep. And then based on our layering and our uh, the weight of the actual layer itself, which is determined based on operator and recipe set point, we achieve the different products. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt, so here's what's happening here. The uh, wool has been layered and created its pre-formed. Uh, It'll pass into the inlet of the oven where it begins that curing process and fuses it together as a board. Got it. And if this was comfort board, which is more dense, same product line, you're yep. just changing the process of how you're doing it a little bit, right? It's still the same it, line. Yeah, though. everything's made on the same line here at Ransom. So you would just see a thinner layer coming out here, but it would be in the same raw material, just a, essentially a different process on the same line. That's so cool. Yep. All right, Matt. So after the uh, curing process that you just saw, it's now passed to our pressure drum where we're slightly damaging the wool so it's not going to pre-compress and come through your customer's walls once you install. And then it passes through our edge trim saw where we cut that rough edge off, leaving that really nice straight edge and then divide it into the lane, whether that be your 47 or 48 inch product line. And what happens to that rough edge and all the other random pieces of material? So all the dust you see being captured by the hoods and that rough edge that's coming off is all being uh, mulched down and conveyed to our waste house where we'll use it to either blow back into the wool web up at the uh, spinners or melt in as a raw material, just like the rocket previously was. Yeah, so there's really no waste in this entire Yeah, process. we try to limit waste as much as possible. We can't say we're waste-free, but we're as good as you can get here at Rockwood. That's cool. And what's the what's the uh, light that I'm seeing on the so tunnel down the here? The light you're seeing is the uh, state-of-the-art marking laser that we use here at Rand Park. And that is capable of uh, turning across the entire length of the line, top and bottom, legitimately anything that we want. That's cool. Yep. So that's where we're putting the R value on the back. Yeah, so you'll get say, your rock wool name and the or logo. your R value or comfort board, whatever it may be. That'll be etched onto the top of the wool with high powered laser for that machine there. Super cool. All right, Matt, so what you're seeing here is our uh, high pressure water jet. So this is giving you that uh, width cut. So the 15 and a quarter, 16 and a quarter you're used to on the job site. So here we're using high pressure water to slice right through this insulation. How high pressure are we talking? So it is capable of going up to 60,000 PSI. Oh, so yeah, quite yeah. the cutting power. <laughs> Cuts through just about anything we put through. We yeah. only put insulation through it here though. So it blasts through and all that dust is captured by the water. And then it's conveyed off to a screw to a collection tank where we drain the water and reuse the water back in our process. And the dried out material we use as a raw material, just like that? the rock it originally was. Now, why is it on a slant? So, it's on the slant to ensure that straight cut. So, the line's continuously moving underneath, and it's cutting straight. If it cut straight across, you would have a jagged cut. Have an angle cut. Yep, you'd have yeah. that angle cut. So, with that pre dispositioned angle, it allows us to have that straight cut. So, this is really the end of the process. So, we've already melted the rock down, we've spun it into fibers, cut it into boards, and now we're packaging it into the packaging you would see at your job site. So as you can see, these uh, finished stacks of bats are coming in through the end feed of the bagger, where they're being compressed down into this snout, and we're taking single cut bags and compressing it in, and it's just essentially popping off of that snout. That's wild, so that's fully automated. There's nobody touching those bags. Yeah, so yeah, the process is completely automated. Our technicians are here really to troubleshoot the process and uh, to refill these rolls of bags. And then after the bats are done here, what happens in the process? So then they'll receive their uh, product description labeling, whether that be inkjet or paper label, and they'll okay. go into the bundling and staffing process for the pallet. And then, yep. and then to the warehouse for the trucks to pick them up. Yep, so yep, it'll go to our uh, temporary storage in our warehouse and be loaded on a truck and on your job site. 
So you'll see behind me here, the robot's gonna pick up those finished bundles, place them onto its pallet, and it's gonna travel down, retrieve its traps, and go straight to the warehouse, and then eventually your job site. Man, such yeah. a good tour, Justin. Yeah. Really appreciate really nice it. You're an you awesome here. tour guide. Thank you. I mean, it's been a pleasure having you here, and I mean, this, this factory has really helped us out in Rockwood to continue to produce insulation at the numbers you guys are requiring on your job sites. That's awesome, man. And you guys have only been open, what? Uh, uh, we're coming up on our one-year anniversary. Oh, one-year anniversary. And, yep, and Congratulations. Really successful here in Ransom. So. That's pretty awesome. And I yep. love seeing the American jobs and American manufacturing. That is good stuff. Absolutely. Here. All right, Justin, take care. Nice I'm going to go you. see the end of the line. I'll see you in a bit. All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, Travis, the end of the line, the holy grail. That's right. Have you ever seen so much insulation in one spot? This is even more than I've got on my jobs, Matt. <laughs> you must build giant houses. <laughs> I'm working on it, man. So I'm working on it. You weren't on camera much, but you were on the tour with me. What's yeah. your big takeaways from this plant tour? I'm just amazed at the amount of cleanliness. To be honest, like this is a this is a fibrous product. Yep. And at no point did any of us <coughs> no respirator needed. Nothing. They recapture every bit of yep. this product. Nothing yep. is wasted. The sustainability effort is really impressive to me. Yeah, I mean, you don't see any dumpsters. You don't see any waste really in this process at all. It's Only amazing. The melt from early on right. gets put right back into the process. So even the pieces that are, oh yeah, it's not gonna be part of it. It goes right back in and starts yeah. over and then you end up with the product in the end. It's a pretty cool souvenir right there. Yeah, man, little takeaway for me. That's impressive. Uh, guys, big thanks to Rockwool for having us out. We were here with a couple other builders. We got to see the Experience Center. Uh, this is really, really cool to see American jobs, American manufacturing. Uh, and based on this warehouse here, it looks like they are running uh, pretty hard to try and keep up with demand out there. I just am grateful that we have uh, an opportunity to use a material like this that is more sustainable, that is more high performance, more yeah. durable. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's easier for us as an installer to install. 100%. It's, a, it's really the only one that's like a pleasure to put in and be done. <laughs> I love it, guys. If you're not familiar with Travis, go follow him on Instagram and stay tuned. He's going to be starting very shortly over on buildshownetwork.com with some weekly contributions. We're really excited about that. In the meantime, I'll put a link to the Rockwell corporate site so you can see how you might be benefiting from this insulation in your houses as well. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Will you do it with me? Yeah. Oh! The Build Show. Show.